Hello everybody, Man of here, and welcome to the weekly update video for OSRS, and yes, we are back on track, no more errors with the music. <laughs> fixed it last week for the OSR, well, no, I don't even know if I fixed it last week for OSRS. Uh, but again, I do apologize for the error that was going on, I do give a huge thank you to, to the person who notified me of this issue. Um... Again, was not intended, just a massive oversight, and I do apologize for that. Uh, however, this week we do have some Wilderness Boss reworks, and we have some gear, and some awesome stuff to go over. So, if you were playing earlier today and you noticed these issues and hotfixes, uh, the Voidwalker pieces aren't showing up on the Grand Exchange that has been fixed. Obtaining the Broken Dra Dragon Pickaxe from the Volcanic Mine isn't updating the collection log, that has been fixed and players have suggested loot uh from the bosses seems to be lacking and aren't giving too many people which is an ongoing so correction there was one fix uh so the current progress is that there was a bug with the number of players that would receive loot from bossing well bosses meaning only five players would be receiving the loot in quantities intended for 15 players so they realized uh the they released a hot fix to correct the issue and change the number from 5 to 15. Uh, but the team is also going to be reviewing the loot quantities over the next few days and they will look at uh, to update soon with any changes they plan to make. So it's here. Uh, they fixed it for now, but if it needs to be nerfed a little bit, they will go about and nerf that actually. So there is a change log. Uh, so here is the overall change log. We will go into more depth later on. Uh, but the Wilderness Boss reworks so mechanically and visually adjusted Venatus, <laughs> Vesheon, and Callisto added various new locations the south of Anacarl, uh, Venetian's Rest, Collis's Den, Silk uh, Chasms, and various entrances and exits uh, from the Escape Caves. Added new soluble boss. Spindle, Calvarian, and Arshio at various new locations near the Graveyard of Shadows, Skeletal Tomb, Hunter's End, and Web Chasm. Added the Ursine Chain Mace, Web Weaver Bow, and a Scepter uh, as tradable upgraded versions of Agor's Chain Mace, Crawl's Bow, and Thamarin's Scepter. Uh, made using tradable attachments dropped by the reworked and new bosses. Uh, reworked Thamarin Scepter. Added the Void Waker, uh, assembled from the Void Waker gem, hilt, blade, and components. Dropped by the Worry worked and new bosses. Increased the drop rates of the Revenant weapons from the Revenant NPCs by 50%. Increased the drop rates of the Revenant weapons from Revenant NPCs by 5 times when killing them on Wilderness Slayer task. Increase the drop rate of the Dragon Pickaxe from the King Black Dragon uh, from 1 in 1,000 to 1 in 1,500. Uh, added the Dragon Pickaxe to the Calfi Queen's loot table at a rate of 1 in 400. Added ore packs to the Petrified Percy's shop in the Volcanic Mine. Uh, these have a chance of re rewarding the player with a broken Dragon Pickaxe when opened. Nermoff will make players uh, a dragon pickaxe when presenting with 2.5 mil GP and a broken dragon pickaxe. So you need to have both in order to get the finished work. Adjusted the prayer dream behavior of the enchanted sapphire bolts clear mind effect in PvP combat. And then for Secrets of the North, they adjusted the Phantom Moose Paws loot tables as follows. Uh, Torsal Seeds went from 5 to 4, Snapdragon 31 to 5. The Dragon Blade Legs from 3 to 2, Runite Ore 23 to 18, Renard Seed, which is rare, uh, from 10 to 8, and Toad Flax 74 to 55. Uh, also rotated the Ancient Scepter when equipped to look a little more natural. And some other changes are that they restored some missing textures to steps of the Patterdomus, corrected grammar in the Pyramid Plunder, added a warning to prevent accidental bone burying at the Ectofuntus Bone Grinder, and added more information warnings on high-risk worlds when entering the wilderness via the Wilderness Ditch, uh, Ferox Enclave, and Canoes. So as we have discussed, there is new wilderness stuff here, and there's new weapons. So 
Um, obviously, the, all this content is risky, so keep that in mind. The OSRS PV well, wilderness is very dangerous. Uh, but here is the map of the new wilderness, as you can see, the new locations. Uh, you can see Callisto's Den and all the other, and there's a Silk Chasm, Bereshian's Rest. And there's all sorts of little icons here uh, for these new dungeons, and even some stuff up here. So do check that out. Uh, the reworked bosses are all multi-combat encounters, so bring some friends along if you're ready for this. And be prepared to encounter teams of other players looking to take you down as well as take down the boss. So, <laughs> pretty interesting. Uh, to access the boss layers and adjoining escape caves, uh, more on those later, uh, you have to pay a 50k GP fee. Don't worry, it decreases by 10k GP for every boss kill you rack up. Uh, this is part of their plan to reduce disruptive behavior around the bosses. So you'll keep a, uh, be keeping a close eye on what's happening other over the coming days to make the, sure the fee is fair or not. Because uh, they don't want it to be affecting honest players. Uh, and should you die you know, uh, for PVM death to one of the bosses, not an opter, opportunist PKer, you'll find your gravestone outside of the entrance of whichever boss layer you die. So keep that in mind. Uh, so you have Callisto, it's the big red bear, as they're calling them, big red lair. Um, there is bear traps all over the place, so keep that in mind as you're going to be fighting him. Uh, although most of the moves, yeah, blah, blah. although the move has only made everyone's favorite bear angrier, Callisto is no longer able to join staring out over the wilderness eastern shore while you whack him uh, with impunity so he's more than willing to whack back uh, while they won't give too much away they say that you want to keep a distance from his melee attacks uh, perhaps you can get him to chill out so ice spells are probably a good, good way um, and steer clear of the bear traps uh, so those bear traps are actually dangerous keep that in mind and then we have Vershion uh, for Vershion's Rest, which is south of the Lava Dragon Isle. Um, but unfortunately, he's doing anything but resting from way they say. And he had a bit of a makeover, so he looks a bit better. Um, but this life-changing experience has also taught Vershion to use his shield. So one of the hints they are giving... Um, Keep an eye out for when he raises it, unless you wish to have your hit be deflected back at you. So he is doing that. Uh, Veshi and Skeletal Hellhounds are loyal as ever and will be returned uh, during the new encounter. Unfortunately, you will have to take them down while dodging Vershian's powerful lightning attacks, so keep that in mind. And then you have Venonatus uh, and her brood in the Silk Chasm quite clearly uh, but once inside you'll be fighting for your life on a gargantuan spider web uh, spun over an endless void so the banatus will summon spiderlings throughout the fight whose only goal is to chase you down and feast on prayer points so they do go after prayer points um, so fortunately they're not really that resistant to much so you can take them out pretty quick uh, but do keep that in mind. Uh, and she apparently values personal space, so she's probably weak to melee. But she bombards you with magic and ranged. So if you are somebody who is up close and personal, they do say you should watch where you walk. And then if you're not, you might get caught in a web attack. Uh, so the escape caves... It uh, looks kind of similar to the Zerosian symbol, but also kind of close to uh, how the burrows are. Uh, the caves are interconnected web of tunnels uh, with four exits to the surface, uh, as you can see here. Upon leaving the boss layer or logging out inside one of one, uh, you'll be placed in one of three random locations in the escape caves. And at either the north, southeast, southwest edge of the cave, 
uh, anybody following the close behind within 10 seconds will be able to trail you through the dark and wind up in the same locations to make to get to move on quickly. Uh, there is one problem though, the caves are absolutely infested with bears, skeletons, and poison spiders. Unlike your ordinary run-of-the-mill poison spiders, the unique conditions within these caves have imbued this particular subspecies with a magic attack. So, your pair primes will also constantly drain over time, so you do want to get moving right away. Uh, but there is, of course, the new weapons, and also the other ones, if you remember correctly. You have Thamarian Scepter up first, uh, with a magic attack of 15, and defense of 20, and attack rate of 4. Uh, it doesn't have a special attack, but when used against NPCs in the wilderness, it gains a plus 50% damage and plus 50% accuracy on its powered staff attack and non-powered spells. And it can auto-cast non-powered spells. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, but the powered staff attack costs a one revenant ether per cast. So keep that in mind. Um, and has an attack speed of 3 and a max hit equal to your magic level divided by 3 minus 8. So this means that at 99 magic, your base of max hit will be 25 increasing by 50% in the wilderness and further benefiting from any gear that increases magic damage percent. So something to kind of keep in mind and then you have the Accur Scepter which is 22 magic and 20 defense and again attack rate of 4 but this one does have a special attack which a max hit is increased by 50% one hit. The target's defense and magic are reduced by a maximum of up to 15% and when charged with ether and used against NPCs in the wilderness, it gains 50% damage and accuracy on its powered staff attack and can, can autocast non-powered spells. So that is another one to be watching out for. Then you got the Web Weaver's Bow, which first you have the Fangs of Venatus, which is a rare tradable drop from Venatus. So who, <laughs> like it says here, who would have guessed? Uh, but you use that to make the bow, which does have a special attack. Oh, and it has an attack of 85 range, 85 range strength, and attack rate of 4. The swarm is its special attack, which unleashes 4 attacks in rapid succession with increased accuracy. Each of these attacks is capped at 40% damage. Special effects, when charged with ether and and you know where this is going when you attack npcs in the wilderness you get plus 50 percent damage and accuracy so these are purely uh focused around the wilderness so it does say here too each of the attacks uh is capped at 40 percent damage so theoretically maxing out at 160 percent damage of every attack hits well, on top of this successful attacks have a chance to inflict poison on hit which is actually not mentioned up here in the very top. So keep that in mind and starting out the poison does a four damage. So this is definitely worthwhile. Then you have the Ursine Chain Mace, which you need in order to get this going. You need to have the Claws of Callisto and the Vigorous Chain Mace uh, to be able to get this. Uh, each one of these, you need something in order to make it. Uh, and you need the skull of Veshion from Veshion and the Accursed Step well, and uh, Thamarian Scepter in order to make this of the Accursed Scepter. And we already went over the Web Weaver's bow. So keep in mind you need to have stuff in order to make this stuff. Uh, but also the Thamarian's Maze it had some changes. That's why I was mentioning them. Uh, but Ursine has an attack of 53 stab negative two slash and 71 crush 74 melee strength prayer two and attack rate of four special attack is bear down which hits with massively increased accuracy on successful hits uh, deals 20 damage over six seconds prevents running for six ticks and decreases the target's agility by 20. And then, of course, the special effect is when charged with ether again and be seasoned wilderness uh, well, against them, uh, you gain 50% damage and accuracy. 
So that is absolutely amazing. And then you also have the Void Waker. Uh, but you will need the Void Waker, the Blade, Hilt, and Crystal in order to even get this. It will be able to make it. Which has a 70 attack for stab, a slash of 80, negative 2 crush, and a plus 5 magic. And defense is only 1 slash and 2 magic, but the melee strength is 80, an attack rate of 4. The special attack is Disrupt, uh, deals guaranteed magic damage between 50 to 100% of your melee max hit. Uh, special effect does not have one, but pretty awesome uh, weapon right there. But there's also some new pets too to go in with this, uh, the Wilderness Boss Pets. So uh, you have now Callisto, Beshion, and Fanatis. And they've been given graphical upgrades to the Callisto, uh, the Callisto Cub, Venata, Spiderling, and Vishian Jr. And they've had their parents to upgrade to match. And then there's new single plus bosses. Uh, so there's a new soluble boss, layer entrances. So for you have the Graveyard of Shadows with the Skeletal Tomb. You have the Hunter's End, the Web Chasm. So do check that out. And that will be for Arshio, Calviaron, and Spindle. So to keep that in mind, they also have the pets slots that are similar to Calesto and all of them. The Revenants, again, we went over that. You know, keep in mind their drops have been adjusted. The Dragon Pickaxe drops from the Calphite Queen has been adjusted, same as KBD. Um, so do keep that in mind. And Nermoth he is ready to now prepare them and percy's petrified you remember if you remember in the one other video that whenever you get the ore packs you have a chance of getting a broken dragon pickaxe that way and with the zerite crossbow and sapphire bolts uh it's not a strictly pvp you know wilderness boss rework but uh, to get everybody up to speed, the Enchanted Sapphire Bolts and Enchanted Sapphire Dragon Bolts have a 5% chance to trigger and the Clear Mind effect. Clear Man reduces the target's prayer points by 5% of the attacker's range level rounded down. So this prayer drain effect was able to apply in full regardless of target's hit points, meaning it was possible for a group of players to consistently and completely drain a target's prayer points to zero while securing kills. So, uh, following today's update, if the target's remaining hit points are less than 5% of the attacker's range stat, uh, the prayer, uh, prayer drain will be calculated using the target's remaining hit points instead. Additionally, the prayer drain will only activate if a bolt passes its accuracy check. And the Zeray crossbow doubles the accuracy on the next shot, so this is an unlikely to crop up. Uh, but... They want us to keep, you know, an eye on things, obviously, and um, see how things go. And there's also a similar mechanic with the Ancient Mace. Keep that in mind. Uh, Secrets of the North and the Phantom Moose Spot Tweaks. We actually discussed this. It was mostly the drops. They're like, eh, some of these were a little bit too much. Uh, there was some other changes. Uh, some missing texture has been restored to the steps of the Paterdomus. And they corrected grammar in the Pyramid Plunder. Uh, but there is also a Crack to Clue 3, which reads as is. Emotes in order with X, with an X between the gap. Pretty hard to find if not marked on the map. Bring your spade and get ready to descend. Perform the emote and then dig at the end. Dots small as ants and into the background they blend. Perhaps skip them we as you won't need won't need them until the end. They contain enough information for progress to be made, but it certainly be tough without more aid. So probably something kind of dangerous, but go ahead and try to crack that clue. But anyway, we got the PvP road to go into period A, so 539 US PvP, 548 Germany, high risk PvP, 577 US free-to-play PvP, 559 UK, LMS Competitive, World 390 AUS, LMS Competitive has been activated this rota, 
and the PvP Arena is using a pure loadout for ranked duels and tournaments this week. And that will lead us to everything for this week, guys. So thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, later, guys.